Hey guys, this is our third interview. We were fortunate enough to get our first IKF official. Uh, in this case, he's an inspector. His name is Francisco. Uh, he was gracious enough to come down and uh, hang out with us, uh, give us some feedback on what he does, what he sees at all these events, and uh, some advice. Um, of course, we're going to need to get a hold of Steve. Steve's the president. Uh, he founded all of this, and of course, the IKF is global. So we want to know uh, what the IKF is doing on the other side of the pond. Maybe they're doing some things that we need to do as well. So we're going to keep trying to contact him and uh, book him very soon. Please watch this interview. Please comment, subscribe. Please let us know if you have any ideas. Thanks. So my name is Francisco Abundis, and I've been with the IKF for two years. Uh, we, we, we've been fighting Muay Thai under the IKF for almost a year now. Uh, we came up with this idea to start doing this video series, and this was the first guy I brought my idea to. He's always there, never takes a day off. He's at every event, and um, he really encouraged us to, to do this video. So it was with his encouraging words and, you know, his idea to, you know, go talk to Steve, make sure Steve says it's okay, and that day uh, all the fights were great, and Steve was in a good mood, and he was all about it. He thought it was a great idea. Um, so, you know, we, we have to thank you very much for that because um, it was a great night for us to know that we could move forward with this. Um, and, and this video series is very important to us. Um, so, you know, we'll get started with um, what are the most frequently asked questions you get uh, while you're at the shows or while you're at the weigh-ins? Um, I imagine it's always the same question from 20 different coaches. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, mainly as an inspector, uh, the questions that I hear are the equipment. Yeah. Uh, it's mainly the headgear. Yeah. The shin pads are no problem. The, you know, everybody will come up with the cloth ones. Yeah. Uh, but the headgear is uh, seems to be like the most asked question. And then, other than that, um, the cornermen. Yeah. You yeah. Know, how many cornermen? How many cornermen? Uh, those two would be on the weigh-ins the most frequently asked question I guess that it would have to be how what the weight can fluctuate yeah that's that's one of the questions we have in here is there an official amount I was always told it's two pounds okay um, well you, this you're gonna have to uh, I, I can look a little further into this but it depends how you book okay. the fight. Okay. You can sense. make it. Uh, I understand. You can say, I want this at 145, you know, and you're going to have maybe uh, a pound, 0.9, yeah. something like that. But there's also the weight class. So you can, you can book a, a fight, you know, from anywhere from 140. 40 to 147, 146. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I think it's just they, people don't know. Yeah. And they book it at weight. Right. So there's no flexibility. Right. And there's nothing really we can do once it's on paper. So it makes it harder, harder on them, especially with the scales sometimes yeah. uh, being different. Depending on the event, ground being uneven or yeah. whatnot. Uh, it can affect that. So if, if you know, I think uh, again, Steve might shed some yeah. more light into the what kind of how do you book that kind of fight? You right. Know? Uh, we we've had instances where we've been booked at forty five, but our opponents at forty six. You know, and they'll they'd usually ask you, you know, is that okay if with you're okay you? With it, yeah. That seems to be how everyone does it, and and that's fine. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. I think it's a good way to not lose a fight over a pound. You know, um, you do see guys coming in 10 pounds overweight, and that's just... A lot. Yeah, and that's just obviously you fucked up, you know. Either go cut the weight or you're not No, fighting, you can't cut you the know. weight. They won't let you cut it anymore? Because we've seen guys no. dying. No, no, no. <laughs> the, if you're uh, three, four pounds over, you you cannot drop the... You can, the most they let you drop is two pounds. Okay. So... Well, that's where the two pounds comes from. That exactly. Heard, okay. See, that's a beautiful rule. I like that rule. Yeah. Um, you know, my guys uh, in my gym, if they're over 10 pounds of their, their fight weight, if, say, my guy fights at 45, if he comes in and he weighs 60, he's off the roster. 
Yeah. I'm not booking him anything until he gets closer to his weight. Yeah. Um, that's just my opinion. Not everyone has to do it that way. Um, but it makes it easier for them as an amateur to not cut 15, 20 pounds the week before. You know, uh, it's just not safe. You're, you're going in there a week. Exactly. So, yeah, and I point. think it's an American wrestler thing. A yeah. lot of wrestlers are used to that. Um, I never really had to cut a lot of weight, but uh, it's just not safe. You know, um, one of the other things I wanted to ask you as an IKF inspector and is obviously a fan, uh, why is amateur Muay Thai so important in California? Um, you know, as a, as a clothing line, obviously we love Muay Thai. Uh, this, is, this is all I do. I don't want to do anything else. Um, so the clothing line kind of helps us get the name out there, helps us make certain things trendy so maybe more people will start buying them. Um, but for you personally, why is Muay Thai so important? California? Well, you know, I just think the the whole aspect of getting people to fight and, you know, uh, see if they're good enough to go for pro and whatnot, yeah. this is, this has to be the first step yeah. to going pro. Um, uh, you know, as far as me doing it personally, I love martial arts, you know. I, I've done martial arts my whole life. The thing with me is I, you know, I went to uh, like 14, 15 different schools yeah. because, uh, and I mean, and I mean like grade school, high okay. school, and it was because we moved a lot every, wow. every year. So I, you know, I would join gyms, dojos, you know, right. whatever, whatever it was. Yeah, whatever style it was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once we settled here in California, I started doing, we started doing the, the stand-up and whatnot. And I feel like, it, to me, it's just something I've done all my life. And now that I'm working as, as a real estate agent, I still, I feel like, you know, other than going to the gym, this is something I, it's, it's a part of me. Yeah. I just have to be involved somehow, yeah. you know. The pay is not great, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. So this is just something I feel. Personally, I just, I feel like I will always be involved with Yeah, I mean, that's, Muay Thai, martial arts. It's definitely something that uh, I tell you know, young fighters when they come in. First thing I got to tell them is if you're looking to get rich, you're in the wrong martial yeah. art. <laughs> yeah. This isn't something we do for money. It's yeah. something we do because we don't know what to do without it. Yeah. Um, you know, even with clothing line and owning a gym, you know, I don't expect to be driving a Maybach, but it would be nice if I could pay my bills on time. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, so. Making money is just part of the economy that we're in. We're required to charge. If I didn't have to charge money, I would probably be on the barter system or I would do something else. But right. it's more important to grow Muay Thai than it is to make a million dollars off of it. Yeah. Because um, then it, it easily gets corrupted. Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, that money you're charging, you're putting it back into Muay Thai. Yeah. You're going to promote an event. You're going to put it back into Muay Thai. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to charge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bigger than owning a gym. It's bigger than a clothing line. It's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a way of life, you know, and, and we're just fortunate. Uh, I say this in all my videos because I don't hear anybody say it enough, but we're just fortunate to be able to do this in California. It's yeah. a Thai martial art that we don't have any business knowing. We got lucky that it spilled over here, and we got lucky that there's a bunch of crazy people like us that don't know what to do without it, you know. Um, uh, I, I tell my guys constantly, we're a special kind of stupid. We, we like the pain, we like inflicting the pain, and we love the respect, we love the humility. It, it's the whole balance of it all is amazing. You know, and I just don't know what I would be doing or where I'd be without it. You know, having nine to fives and things like that just weren't the same. As a real estate agent, you could just tell them buy the house or, you know, you're not walking out of here. <laughs> no, it's, you know, it's something, sales, I've always been in sales, but um, it's very flexible. And uh, it's, yeah. it's a job that allows me to do Muay Thai True. and, you know, and still have time for my family. So, you know, but Muay Thai is definitely something that I have to be involved with. Otherwise, yeah. you know, that's what makes you one of us. Unbalanced. He's yeah. in charge of all our sales from now on. So he's, he's a good sales guy. <laughs> um, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, IKF training events, um, and this is something that I don't know that everybody understands. There's constant training going on. Um, it, it just like Muay Thai is evolving here in the States because of MMA and wrestling and things like that, um, certain techniques get altered and changed and that obviously spills into 
Muay Thai, traditional Muay Thai like we're doing, but um, I, I don't think people talk about or understand the training that you guys go through. I don't think they understand how long it is and, and probably how difficult it is to learn terminology and, and all those things. Um, can you give us a little bit of information on what goes on or what your experience was like? Uh, mainly it's, it's you, sh you know, you're being taught by somebody that's already done it. They, you shadow for the position that you're signing up for. So, um, you know, if you want to start volunteering in the locker rooms, then you're going to start shadowing. For example, me, we're, you know, you'll see that actually because there's more and more people okay. getting involved. Um, so the main thing is that shadowing, you know, you don't, it, it's a volunteer thing. Yeah. And eventually, you know, they'll start using you once you know what it is that you're doing. In When you're shadowing, that's where you're asking the questions. The person that it, you're shadowing, you know, why are you doing this? Uh, why were these reps okay and these reps not okay? Yeah. Uh, and then also, Steve has the trainings that you can see on the IKF website. And um, those are big trainings that go on for every position, referees, uh, event court, the, the people in charge, so uh, weighing administrators, you know, all the positions. So um, he does, I believe, three or f three a year or four a year, where One new people can go yeah. and you know and check it out, try it out. That's, that's good. I mean, I think a lot of people don't don't know that they have them once every couple of months. You know, three or four times a year probably takes three or four months to organize, figuring out where you're gonna yeah. have it. Things like that. Um, They're up there for a while. Yeah. They're on the IKF website where you find all the fight, all the events. There's an IKF California page. Yeah. Specifically for with all the events, and uh, that's where you're, you know, you'll find them. Okay. So if you guys have questions, scroll through the website. Uh, I think there's a California flag um, there is. that you can click on. Um, find it. Uh, not I'll try to put the link. Yeah, it's not this bare. Be doing more you know, it would be yeah. better if it was this bare. Yeah. Steve, hint. <laughs> Um, but, you know, uh, go through the website, see what you can find. If there's something you can't find, message me. Um, I'll do what I can to find it or find someone that knows the answer. But that's what these videos are for. Uh, we need to get more ideas, more opinions uh, to get everything more organized, everything running smoother so that if you have a question, there's multiple places that you can find the answer. Um, it, even IKF referees and, and officials that we're tracking down to interview um, we're doing this because when you're at the weigh-ins and you're at the fights, it's difficult to pull you guys aside and ask questions. Um, I know I sure as hell don't want to be an IKF guy. Uh, I not only do, don't have the time, but like we talked about before, you're in a position of power. So immediately some people are going to not like you or not trust you or want to fight you and want to argue just because. Um, I don't know that I could deal with that right now just as a young gym owner and you know, running a clothing line. Eventually... I kind of feel like I have to. If I'm going to pay it forward, it's like becoming a crew. You know, you start fighting, you start teaching. Um, I don't think I want to want a promotion because they have all kinds of problems. But if I could do something within the IKF realm, it, that's at least paying it forward. Make sure we have good referees, good judges. Um, so I think it's something that more and more gyms and coaches should maybe get involved with when they have the time. But it's difficult. And now that you guys are getting new... Um, officials shadowing you, your life is going to get way more hectic at the weigh-ins and at the fights. Exactly, until it settles, you know. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's always difficult because, you know, energy is running high, fighters are ready to go, coaches, some coaches get just as amped as the fighters. Yeah, they do. You know, um, and, and that's why we're doing this here because as a coach, you can't run to the IKF officials and start demanding answers that they might not know yet. Sometimes it takes time to find out and... You know, they're still relatively new, so they're still trying to work through everything. But, again, that's why he's here doing this interview, so we can start figuring out quicker ways to get these answers or at least have other uh, avenues to find the answer um, so that you don't always have to bug an IKF official. Uh, hopefully you'll have the answer on your phone or on a website you don't or bug. a PDF. <laughs> you don't bug. Um, do you have uh, any thoughts on an amateur ranking system champion contender Things like that. Uh, it's almost divided between Northern and Southern California, so it'd be really difficult. There's going to be a lot of fighters that get lost in the crack, but uh, do you have any idea of, of, is that possible, or what are your thoughts? I think it's a good idea, 
Um, you know, you just keep track of everybody's record. And I believe Steve, you know, has yes. tr- keeps track of this. Yeah. I'm sure he has plans to implement it all, just like we were talking about a yeah. database, which we discussed with uh, our Defiant interview. Uh, it would be great to have a database of fighters. And yeah. uh, like I said, uh, I'm going to look into it and I'm going to contact Steve. But before I do, I want to have some idea of, hey, look, this might be possible if we try this. And, you know, it, he might already have it in place, or he might not, or I might say something that sparks an idea where he figures out how to do it. But, um, uh, you know, I, I want to make sure that the IKF and the Muay Thai community knows that, you know, here, uh, Humility Through Pain wants to do everything we can to, you know, offer our opinions or our help. Um, because there's only certain things you guys are going to be able to do, and there's only so much you can do since you're new in the, in the Muay Thai realm, and, and we need some type of officiating. And we can't just sit back and point fingers and wait, you know. So, you know, I know, aside from me, there's going to be other people that want to do it too. But on camera, so everybody knows, we're going to do everything we can um, to, to help make sure everything runs smooth. And if we screw up and my gym gets penalized for something, shit happens. We shouldn't have screwed up in the first place. Um, but as long as there's a, a rule book or something clear cut, we shouldn't be screwing up, yeah. you know. Um, we have so many questions here. Uh, do you have any advice for fighters, for coaches, um, as an inspector? I know you see a lot of um, hand wrapping and you know gear. We talked about a lot of guys have headgear with the cheek pad, which is obviously not allowed. But sometimes you don't want to pull the fight just because they have cheek pads. Um, I like that you guys will ask the fighters, "Will you fight anyway?" Um, I think that's about all you can do. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much. Oh, we can do the the truth is you know the the style of headgear that with the cheeks mm-hmm. you know you could use them anywhere else mm-hmm. the thing is they could they see it as a safety thing a lot of times the headgear already you know people don't like wearing the headgear yeah. really you know it it comes down or it goes it way slides. too up and now it's choking you so Adding the cheekbones sometimes will block your vision, or, or it'll just make it tougher for you to see. Yeah. Uh, without it, yes, you are expo- your cheekbones, your face is more exposed, but at the same time, you have better visual of what's going on. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's, that's you know, what I've heard uh, from, I guess, Dan and uh, the refs. So, uh, that would be... I suggest if so we can just get on this Muay Thai, uh, you know, we the same page. Right. Um, everybody just get the open face. Yeah, I mean, the it, headgear. We I know fighting. it's expensive, and uh, you know, I know it's well, like you said, we don't, you know, make a lot of money. Right. Uh, but if this is something that you're looking to do, I mean, even if you're not looking to go pro. Yeah. If you just want to know where you're at in Muay Thai, how you how you're doing in Muay Thai, yeah, it's a, you know get the headgear yeah. and things will just run smoother. Other than that, really, the hand wraps, uh, the hand wrapping, I do see different hand wrapping. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, not enough padding or whatnot. But as long as you know, it's covered good. And it's not too tight. Right. No you know, the fighter is gonna be good. Knuckle. No tape. Yeah. No right. tape on the knuckles. All that. Yeah. Uh, it has to be. They'll tell us. You know, two inches. Right. But, like, you know, you've seen us. We're pretty lenient. We'll let you go. You know, sometimes you're like an, an inch or an inch and a, and a half. half. We're yeah. not gonna make you yeah. wrap. I mean, as you had mentioned before, um, the authority position. Nobody likes you off the bat. And that is true. Yeah. That's why, from me personally, I'm a laid-back kind of guy as far as when I'm in there. I know there's already enough pressure on the fighter. Yeah. Uh, and the coaches, like you said, their adrenaline is all the way through the roof. You know, they're they're worried about their fighter. Yeah. So, you know, nagging and unwrap their hands and wrapping them, it's just making everybody's life harder. So as long as it's re- – our, our job is for the safety. Right. So as long as they're wrapped where, you know, no one's going to get hurt, we're fine with that. The, you know, the wraps are no problems. And um, I had mentioned to you earlier, the shin guards, we don't yeah. really have a problem with that. I'm, I'm uh, you know, it, with safety in mind, I'm always a fan of maybe for the first 
three fights or so, letting them wear thicker shin guards. But for the most part, the first fight, first two fights they have, these guys are freaking out. Yeah. And they're amateurs, and you're allowed to freak out. Um, so maybe thicker shin guards would be a little better. Let them fight again sooner instead of having to heal. But uh, the, the, the cloth shin guards aren't really a, a deal breaker. It's just safety. Um, oh, I you like, know what? Another thing to make life easier, you had asked me. Uh, always assume that you will be there longer than you think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On weigh-ins, <laughs> on fight day. There's, you know, getting mad is a waste of energy. Yeah, yeah. And and not only that, but sometimes that energy spreads, and then you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. So, if in your mind you know, you know, we're gonna take forever. Just you know, be ready, relax. A lot of times the coaches get more tense because mm-hmm. things are running late. The mm-hmm. fighters start to get irritated. Yeah. Well, if you go in there with the mindset that you know what, I'm just gonna fight when they call my name. Yeah. It's gonna help you, but yeah. anyways. Yeah, uh, we so just pretty much relax. Yeah, we we have a saying in here. It's it's just another day. That's yeah. it. You know, you're you're fortunate to get to fight. So you know, you're fighting for a promoter. You're fighting under the IKF sanction. So there's rules. Um, the first thing that my guys did when we decided we were gonna fight is we got the rules. We got the rule book. We got as much information as we could, and they all had to read it. Um, so this way, they're not just relying on me. You know, they have some responsibility to know what's going on. And if you're not capable of doing that, don't fight. You know, it's, it's you, you want to go to some backyard fighting or you want to fight in the street, that, that's on you, but you're not doing anything to grow Muay Thai. Yeah. You're not helping, you're not doing yourself any favors, you're not safe. Um, I think a lot of people forget Muay Thai in particular is a sport. Um, you know, there's referees, there's judges, there's a, a point system point of system. sorts for a reason. Um, you know, so you, you're going there to follow rules, to fight a specific way, and to go home. You're supposed to be as safe as possible. And a lot of young fighters don't want to wear gear. They want to go gung-ho, and they want to, you know, no equipment, full full Muay Thai rules, and they've got one fight. You know, and, and that's going to happen. And I think that's where the coach needs to drop a little reality on their fighter and be like, look, you suck. You're not ready for that. It's your second fight. You know, wait. Um, you know, and, and again, personally, I'm brutal with my guys. If you're not ready to fight, then no. There's no way in hell we're letting you go. And if you don't like it, there's a hundred other gyms you can go to. But, you know, not only is our reputation on the line, but your safety is on the line. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, uh, as since we are all martial artists, you need to be honest. That's the foundation of all of this. Um, I don't need a hundred fighters. I need one or two good ones. And if they're lucky and if they have enough fun, maybe they can go pro. But you got to go through all the amateur ranks, you know, and it's important to have an IKF and to have the promoter working with the IKF. And, you know, we've seen coaches and, and fighters arguing with you guys and the promoter. And that's something that I wanted to bring up, too, you know. Um, coaches, fighters, shut up. Make weight. Uh, if you're going to be there for three or four hours, suck it up. We all have stuff to do. We all have gyms to run, families. But we're fighters. This is something we do aside from going to work and aside from being at home and we're lucky to do it so live with it um thoughts on uh the point system um the point system is always going to be up for debate it doesn't matter how good it is or how much we change it there's always going to be someone who wants something different and that's going to depend on their style their punchers or kickers um but the current point system probably globally always fluctuates. You get more points for sweeps, you get more points for kicks. Um, do you have any opinion or ideas on... On the point system, you know, that's more uh, a ref question. Uh, not, not a ref, uh, a judge question. Right. But I, when I, you know, when I hear things from the judges, is you know, they mainly look to see who does more damage. Right. You know, okay, he punched him, Ten times, you know, this guy punched him three times, but the ten times that this guy punched him were, you know, mm-hmm. little pats, jabs, and whatnot, and the three times that this guy punched him were hard cross, uh, you know, uh, uppercuts, powerful punches. So I know a lot of times they look for the damage. Right. Also, if the fight is too close or whatnot, sometimes, you know, the, well, who was who looked more Muay Thai? Who who right. you know who was moving? Who stuck to the style? Right. 
But as far as, uh, you know, what's worth more, if the sweeps are worth more, if the body kicks are worth more than the leg kicks, I, that's, I have no idea. Okay. So even right there, there's big tips. You know, go out there to win. Fight hard. Don't rely on yeah. the, the opportunity to score a point. Um, this isn't a point scoring you should, style. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you should be fighting to win. And if it goes the distance, if both you guys are, are insane enough and tough enough to make it to the end, you know, you should be exhausted, you should be a little sore, and it should have been a great fight. And that's what will get the promoter happy because you just put on a hell of a fight. Um, that'll put more butts in the seats because now people are hearing about these amazing Muay Thai fights. So, you know, we got to do our part too to, to fill up seats in the promotion. And, you know, hoping and, and praying to score a point here and there is going to turn this into an Olympic type sport, uh, which I don't want to see. Uh, I don't want to see it get watered down. Um, so, Already, those are tips on how to fight competitively within IKF rules, which was one of the questions that we had on here. Um, if, it's, if it's a Muay Thai fight, you know, do stand Muay Thai, box Muay Thai, right. do the Y crew. If it's a kickboxing fight, do everything a kickboxer right. does, you know. So it just, you know, what are you fighting? Right. MMA. And, and again, that comes back to knowing the rules. Know what you're allowed to do. Know why you're allowed to do it. And, uh, you know, stay within that set. Because even, even though we're amateurs, most of these guys want to go pro. And you go pro and you got rules there too. You don't get to do and whatever you want to do. not lenient. No. Yeah. And that's, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of if you screw up, there's, there should be some type of uh, punishment. You know, and, and that's going to be really difficult when you're dealing with two fighters and, and two different gyms and, Someone's always going to want to be innocent. Someone's always going to want someone to have a tough punishment. It's difficult. It's a shitty position to be in. Um, but I do think there needs to be a little more disciplinary actions, and that'll happen over time. But I would like to see, you know, people at least know if you screw up, there will be some type of consequence. Exactly. Um, that covers a lot of the stuff that we were talking about. Um, what do you think about... The, the project that we're doing, the videos that we're shooting, um, you know, I've, I've talked to you at length a lot of times about it, but, uh, you know, what's, you, what's your opinion? And this way everybody I gets like it. Hear. It gives exposure, um, knowledge, you know, you're, you're trying to, like you, you know, you're, like you said, you're trying to sponsor the sport, you're trying to uh, expand it, you're trying to put it out there, you know, so this is a great way of doing that explaining to people why we do this. You know, everybody has a different story. Yeah. Um, rules and, and everything that fighters need to know, coaches need to know. I think it's all great. It's a great idea. And I love the humility through pain logo, <laughs> you know, or just, just that quote. Yeah. Uh, it, mean, it means a lot of different things to us, you know, physical and, and emotional. Uh, I think the emotional pain of training gets left out a lot everyone thinks you're a tough guy but yeah. like we say on our website it's hard as hell to get to the gym if you get your ass off the couch and get there that's half the battle yeah. you know and gym is home for all of us so get there train your ass off and you'll feel better afterward be sore the next day but you'll, it's a good sore you'll be happy you did it yeah. you know um i think that's about everything that we have uh, i really really want to thank you yeah, for no helping problem. us with this um you are a huge huge part of doing this, um, you know, the first IKF guy that we have in here, um, a guy that everyone's going to recognize because we all see you guys, you know, there's about 10 or 15 of you guys that are always there, you know, whether so we're Cal up north or not. Yeah, yeah. So, Southern so California, Cal we're, yeah. you know, we try to work as many events, and uh, as you know, IKF is just, it's, this Muay Thai is just growing so much that we're going to start to have multiple events on the same day, Right. and, uh, you know, you might not see me there, but I'll be at the other event and whatnot. But there's all there's they're everywhere. They're yeah. all over the world. The yeah. IKF. So yeah, they're global, and and that's what makes this exciting. Is you know, it, it might not be where we want it to be now, but knowing that the we'll IKF is global means that they do know what they're doing exactly. and they do have experience. So exactly. it's gonna take both of us telling them, well, well, hey, this is Muay Thai. We need to be doing this, or. You know, the IKF saying, no, well, that's cool, but these are the rules that we have. And, you know, we got to work together on this, you know, to, to make it smooth. 
uh, we can't put everything on the IKF. And obviously we can't run it ourselves or we would have been doing it already. So we need that sanctioning body there to make sure that everything's fair. Um, so, great. you know, thank you so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So and uh, everybody, thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out. We got more videos coming soon. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, there's still a ton of information that uh, Francisco has and we didn't get to cover. Uh, hopefully we'll get to get them back again. Uh, some of the things we talked about off camera were promoters input. Sometimes promoters have influence on things like cornermen, uh, Y crews sewing the ring, things like that. Um, and new IKF officials, uh, when they first start, they have to shadow, follow around an IKF official. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some, some debate as to whether or not they should be experienced in Muay Thai or we should just take any martial artist. Um, different martial arts styles are going to have different influences on uh, the way you fight and they might even score differently. Um, Francisco is also a real estate agent out here in Southern California so if you want to buy or sell your house from a super famous real estate guy that's who you contact and uh, we'll put his contact information up. Um, give him a call if you know someone who wants to buy, sell, rent or just needs advice. Uh, thanks for watching guys.